you know there's snow. There we go. Good afternoon. Welcome, Shane Thompson and Danny McNeely, Satu Region. Michael Nev, MLA for Detroit. Kevin O'Reilly, Frame Lake. And I am Kieran Testart, the member for Cam Lake and chair of the Standing Committee on Government Operations. Uh, we are missing Mr. Simpson from Hay River and Mr. Nakamayak from uh, Nanakput, member for Nanakput. Unfortunately, couldn't be with us today. Um, we will move into the agenda before hearing from our witnesses, and I'd like to thank. Uh, members of the public, our witnesses, and media for being here today to discuss this issue. Um, so now we'll move to agenda item one, the prayer, and uh, I'll ask for a volunteer from the committee. Ms. Thompson? Sure. Our Creator, we are gathered here today on, this, on behalf of the people of Northwest Territories. You have given us the opportunity to discuss these important matters that are in front of us that will affect all residents. We pray to you, our Creator, to assist us in hearing and listening to our fellow colleagues as we hopefully make wise decisions. Please give us the wisdom to truthfully come to a decision that will benefit our people. Please grant us the peace and understanding to accept and acknowledge our mistakes and grant us the wisdom to be compassionate and understanding leaders. As well, our Creator, please look at for our family, friends, and constituents who are back home as we work for a better tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, and thank you to uh, committee members. Uh, if you look into the, the agenda, um, items five and six will be considered in camera. We will go in camera at that time. Uh, the, oh, and seven, apologies. Um, and those are uh, of uh, uh, confidential matters to committee. Item four, however, is the public presentation with our witnesses from Sport North, and uh, we will proceed to that immediately. Um, so uh, first up, we'll do declarations of uh, conflict of interest. And I'm sorry, we should first ask that the uh, agenda be adopted. Can I get a motion from committee to adopt the agenda? Mr. McNeely, okay, thank you. All right, and uh, now uh, item three is declarations of conflict of interest. Seeing none, we'll move to the presentation implement, implementation of the Sport, Recreation, and Physical Activity Review, otherwise known as the Sutcliffe Re Report by Maureen Miller, President of Sport North Federation. So I'll ask that Ms. Miller join us at the witness table along with anyone else uh, from the organization. Thank you for thank you for being here today, Ms. Miller, and I'll allow you now to uh, to speak to committee. Thank you. Oh, and please introduce sorry, yourself and uh, your uh, the other witnesses. Thank you, Maureen Miller. I am the president of the Sport North Federation. I have with me today uh, Doug Rentmeister, our executive director, and James Wong, our uh, chair of the finance committee. So. Um, Anything that has to do with operations or finance, uh, I'd ask your indulgence that I'd be able to defer if I can't answer to, to my guests with me. That's okay. fine, Ms. Miller. Thank, Thank you. you. And you may proceed. Okay. So I thought, um, you know, we've sent some correspondence to the committee and to the MLA, so um, to, to brief you on where we are today. I thought maybe the most helpful thing that I could do today is to talk to you about um, how did we get where we are today? What is the history behind uh, the organization and how it, how it comes to, to be here? So if we went back to the beginning when Sport North Federation was created in the late 70s, uh, at that time, in the wisdom of the government of the day, there were lottery dollars. Those lottery dollars were managed through the Sport North Federation. Sport North had the territorial sport organizations and over time that came to include um, members such as the McKenzie Regional Rec Association and the Beaufort Delta so other partners that are now recognized separately uh, in the beginning came in as members under the Federation those lottery dollars were managed through a lottery authority board of the Federation 
Then there came a time when there was a decision made that we uh, save administrative dollars, uh, that we could reduce duplication of services if we created a sport and rec council. And that sport and rec council would be responsible for the administration of the dollars. So the lottery dollars came to be to the Sport and Rec Council and no longer came under the Federation. The Federation continued as it was with its 33 territorial sport organizations and two or 31 members and two uh, external organizations. Um, the members, the other members, the Mackenzie Regional Rec Association, the Bow Fort Delta and uh, Aboriginal Sports Circle and NWT Parks and Rec Association all became partners on their own and were funded separately through the Sport and Rec Council. So the idea to reduce administration and to reduce duplication of services over a 10-year period, in our opinion, didn't come to fruition. And uh, uh, we applied for dollars on behalf of all of our sport organizations. Uh, to help fund them. There came times over those years when those dollars were reduced to the Federation. And instead of us putting a hit to the territorial sport organizations, the Federation reduced administration so that the territorial sport organizations continue to be funded at the level that they had come to know. Um, we did everything we could to advance their ability to run sport because after all, Sport North and its members, by extension, are the experts in sport, and they know what needs to happen, and we believe that they are best equipped to do those things. So we come to uh, the last, say, five years, and there are some decisions made by um, MACA with regard to the Sport and Rec Council, and that maybe that um, there was a CRA ruling that may have seen that having the dollars come internal to government would reduce um, taxation on those dollars. So to move the SRC and or its components under the department and that the funding model would change. The partners, all of the partners, were asked to attend a meeting uh, with uh, the department and the minister was there, the minister of the day was there, along with the department officials. Um, we were asked what our thoughts were on how they could proceed with this new ruling with the, um, from the CRA. The partners, and I was there myself that, that day, uh, to a person thought that ideally for sport in the territory, the best way to advance was to create some kind of a governing board that board should be made up of all the partners and that board would help determine the funding of these lottery dollars to all of the partners and would assist and there would be an accountability and you would know how you would come to get dollars and you'd know what should take place in order for you to account back to the government how you spent those dollars. Um, that was um, shortly followed by this Sutcliffe report. Uh, we received a draft of it, and then we were, we were told that your members are no longer going to apply for funding to you, even though that's who we are as an organization. That is the federation. We're made up of those members. So those members are going to apply directly to government. So we were left as a federation saying, what, are, what is our role and how do we proceed and what is it that we're going to bring to the table for sport when we really are these territorial sport organizations? Um, we had some conversation with government. Our members came to the AGM. We invited um, um, the government to come to our AGM. Uh, we, at the AGM, the members unanimously passed a motion. They wanted one funding agent. They wanted that funding agent to be the Sport North Federation. They did not want to apply separately. There are a lot of administration functions that the Federation does on behalf of the smaller territorial order organizations and even some of the larger ones that we assist with. So um, we, we noticed the members of the Legislative Assembly in August that this was coming about, that we were being told that this is, this is where uh, it's at. And as we move forward today, our members feel they didn't have a choice they had to apply for funding. They were required to apply to MACA for funding. Uh, in November, we held a, um, 
a semi-annual meeting, um, government representation came. They were asked uh, a number of questions by the membership, the concerns of not having one funding agent, not having the collective we of sport to be able to lobby on behalf of all of sport for the betterment of sport was a huge concern. The fact that they as volunteers felt that they weren't going to work for free for the government and that that's what they saw this as being, as the government taking over sport. Um, those, those questions were put forward and they were asked and, and uh, put to the representation of MACA. Uh, our members are moving ahead because they feel they have to move ahead and apply for their funding that way. But it's not because that would be their choice. The Federation is left to say what will we be and how will we, how will we move forward. The concerns we have, we're, we're rolling out a program. The program doesn't have any um, structure in our opinion as a federation, know how to account for the dollars that I'm going to get. What I've been told is you're going to get the same funding you got over the last three years, which is what all the territorial sport organizations got told. So for three years, you're going to have set funding. But after that, we'll let you know how it's going to work. But I don't know how I'm going to account for the dollars that I'm going to get. And I don't know how do I apply for extra money. And I don't know what the parameters are. And an example in November, when the when the um, a representative from MACA was there, the question was asked, "Well, what will be Sport North's role?" And the answer was, "If you're involved in multi-sport games, then you'll have to still be a member of Sport North." So that leads to the further concerns of the federation. So in order for um, you to be a member, you, you know, to be required to get funding from the government, you'd be a member of Sport North. We've already had smaller territorial sport organizations come to us who are only in existence in several communities at this point in time, who are now saying, I don't need to be a member and I don't need to be involved with Sport North anymore because I'm going to get this funding no matter what and I don't do multi-sport games. So, I'm going to do it different. The concern we as a federation have is that when those things start to happen, how do we, how do we see that as an advancement to sport in the territory? How does that make it inclusive to communities? Right now, the funding formula that Sport North uses is an incentive formula. So in order for a sport organization to get the maximum number of dollars available to it, it, ha it gets more money for being in more communities and having more people involved in their sport. That isn't, or at least for what we've seen or been told, what would be the case moving forward. So how is that going to create sport in smaller communities? How is that going to create a willingness for people to go out and create opportunities for healthy living in the territory? We just don't, we just don't understand how that's going to happen. And we have real concerns that when this comes to fruition on April 1, that sport in our territory is going to change drastically and our concern is that it will not be for the better. And so, I guess maybe, uh, maybe I'll leave it at that and see if you guys have any questions you want to ask me. Uh, but I thought it would be helpful if you kind of knew a bit of what the history was and how we got to where we are today. Ms. Miller, thank you for um, sharing those concerns and for, uh, I recall that you um, sent me a letter uh, earlier, which is um, why we thought best to meet with you directly. And I have spoken with Mr. Rentmeister in the past as well. And uh, your advocacy for sport in the north is, is very much appreciated, and the committee is keenly interested in um, in this issue and making sure we're making the best decisions possible. Um, I'll now turn to committee to see if they have any questions for our witnesses or comments on uh, uh, what we just heard. Oh, I'll start. Mr. Thompson, thank you, uh, and I thank Ms. Miller for her her uh, presentation. Um, and information. Um, in my member statement uh, uh, to the House, the, the minister made a commitment to meet with the partners um, to discuss 
what's going on and made a commitment um, to bring all the partners together and to work together on a strategic plan and how we're going to move forward. So I guess my question to um, Ms. Miller or to the executive or to Mr. Rentmeister, has this commitment been followed through on and has the minister um, met with you guys to discuss the matters as presented presently? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, the the uh, Sport North Federation had a meeting um, with the minister in uh, early October uh, to discuss our concerns. We have not had a meeting with all of the partners, and um, and nor have we been invited to anything such as a meeting to discuss a strategic plan for sport outside of what we've already outlined to you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Miller. Um, okay, because uh, I'm glad to hear that that meeting has occurred. I've had a number of conversations with a number of partners because in my former life, that's what I did for a living. So, um, and people, the other partners have met with them. And so I'm hoping that the minister will fall through on what she made the promise in the house. And I think my understanding from the minister is that this is going to happen and there's going to be some clear direction developed by the partnership. Um, in regards to the meeting, um, did the minister ask the question of where you guys see yourself in the big picture of the sport recreation and youth system? Uh, I firmly believe that there is a role for this federation and I support that role. So, but have did, was that question asked and did you guys give a vision of where you foreseen you guys being part of that, uh, the, the big picture? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Ms. Miller. Um, yes, the minister did ask us that question. Um, at the time, we were uh, very difficult for us to answer. We had uh, spent some time with staff investigating what that role could look like from our perspective. Um, but we hadn't had an opportunity to meet with our members. And the earliest opportunity we had to do that was a um, face-to-face meeting in November where we spent uh, considerable time with the members talking about what could this new federation look like uh, under the rules that have been outlined to us for funding and, um, and how we could move forward uh, to better support the territorial sport organization. So that's that's pretty recent that we've had those conversations within the last three weeks. And now the staff has begun to pull together um, some some work on on the vision. The board will meet again. Uh, we have a meeting coming up, and uh, and then we'll have further discussion with that. So I don't I can't I can't really share anything that we've made any decisions, but we have investigated with our members what it is they would like. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, before returning to you, I'll turn to other members. Ms. Thompson. Oh, sorry, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. It, it sounds like uh, Sport North is being asked to reinvent itself without much uh, uh, direction or uh, whatever. So. Um, I don't know, is, is there a role for Sport North in terms of multi-sport uh, games and, uh, and uh, general support for uh, uh, some of the smaller TSOs uh, who may not have the capacity to develop funding applications and so on? Is, is that, uh, you know, I, I don't want, I'm trying not to get you to move too far, but I'm, because I know you've got to talk to your, your membership, but is any sense of where MACA wants you to go? Is, is that what they see their, the role for Sport North is? Or? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Ms. Miller? Okay, so just for clarification, Sport North <laughs> has been uh, always the organization that has run multi-sport games for all of the territorial sport organizations. That is not something, uh, so as far as we're understanding from MACA the only real change uh, with this is how our, how our own members get funded, not through us, but through them directly. 
So is there an opportunity for a smaller sport organization to come to the Federation for assistance? Yes, we would, we would uh, never say no to a territorial sport organization for help. Um, but having said that, when we used to, when we applied for funding up until this, this go round right now where we've put in an application, we would apply for funding for all of the sport organizations, but included in that funding would be any of our administrative uh, costs. So some sport organizations might use us for payroll or because they have a staff or they might use us for um, uh, things in the office, Xeroxing, um, you know, telephone, office space. So we would include all of those dollars into our administrative dollars and, and um, the sport organizations wouldn't pay us directly in the past. That will be a change for them. So well, on the face of it, if I said to you, you got $30,000 last year as a sport organization through the Sport North Federation, so I'm gonna guarantee you that you're gonna get that same amount of money this year and for the next three years. But now that $30,000 that I got to always spend on sport, on the ad advancement development of coaching, athletes, et cetera, now I have to figure out how I'm gonna use some of that money to pay for those other things that have to happen in sport that are administrative. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, so <coughs> it sounds like uh, we'd have to go towards some kind of fee-for-service model. Is that, that's, yeah, I see, shaking your heads, okay, thanks. I think I'm a little bit clearer on some of the issues. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and thanks to our uh, uh, presenters today. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, Ms. Miller, did you want to comment on? Okay. Uh, yeah. These, uh, well, <laughs> we're investigating a fee-for-service. I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It, it seems like, you know, we're, we're speculating already to, uh, to what your NGO is going to turn out to be, but, uh, but I, I would uh, be reserved to say and, and anxious to see what kind of response comes from the minister in, in this area of continued funding. And uh, I'm not really familiar with uh, your organization. I don't play much sports in the past. Uh, I'm interested, but uh, but I'm going to rely on some of my colleagues in that area. And I, I just, I'm like you, I'm sitting on a fence post here wondering what the minister is going to say as we enter into the new uh, budget for the new fiscal year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. Ms. Miller. So just, just um, with regard to um, you know, interest in knowing what's going to happen in the funding cycle. So we know that this th this three year this three year commitment of what dollars will look like, but what will it look like beyond that, and what will sport look like beyond that? And I think those are very, um, uh, very valid concerns or questions um, to understand what would sport in the territory look like. You know, in my preamble. Um, I could have I could have said a lot of other things. Uh, we've done very well as a territory, with a very little amount of money when it comes to high performance athletes. We've had Olympians, and we've had a number of Olympians. You know, for a very small jurisdiction in Canada, to be able to develop athletes at the highest level with so few dollars, we the experts in sport through Sport North, we've done a very good job of that. We have concerns that those kinds of things will go by the wayside because we are the experts. We know where the dollar should go. We know how the development should happen. That's what we do, right, as sport organizations, is develop athletes and coaches and officials. But the one thing we didn't talk about ever here today is about volunteers and what that is and what that means to your community every community in the territory to have volunteers, to have people who are invested in the community, and that those volunteers become the future leaders of our communities. So we're not just teaching them in sport about just being, um, you know, an athlete. 
We're teaching them about being productive citizens in the community and how to be the leader in their community later on and how to step up and to be involved. And, and um, one of the things that we do know is that recently um, the executive coordinator of the United Nations volunteers outlined five key challenges that face governments uh, as they seek to foster and strengthen volunteer action. And those are to frame volunteerism as something to be taken into account in development strategies to reach out to vulnerable populations. And I think that applies to us here in the territory. To build an infrastructure for voluntary action. I think the Federation does that. To support research and to encourage volunteerism without compromising the spirit of volunteerism, which might include incentives for volunteerism, including tax concessions. And I think those are things that we haven't necessarily ever talked about in our territory in a way that is meaningful to the people in the communities. Um, that it, the executive coordinator also cautioned that governments must avoid the temptation to control volunteering and concluded that in many cases the most important thing that government can do is to get out of the way and that is to eliminate legislative policy and organizational barriers so that more people can come forward and actively participate in their communities. And you know I think people have a vision that Sport North Federation is about Yellowknife and I'm here to assure everybody that that is not the case. We believe that healthier people in all of the communities make for a better territory and sport is a way for us to create wellness in the territory and so when we talk about the volunteers in the federation um, you know and uh, many of you here are, have volunteered maybe not in sport but in other things that's why you do it you do it because it's to create a healthier community so uh, you know I, I hear what you're saying and maybe you're not involved in sport curling's my background but we'll get you out one day <laughs> but uh, but I think the volunteer piece is, is huge thank you Mr. McNeely yeah, for, for the record, yeah, we, we have a very active uh, schooling uh, teacher involvement in, in the Satu region. And uh, the, uh, the, the teachers really look forward, and the students as well, on, on getting out from this isolation and having to travel via the winter roads to attend, uh, attend the, uh, the uh, sports activities, particularly here, here in, in Yellowknife. And uh, there's cases where I've heard of Sports North and, and their active involvement. So I, I really am, I might not play sports, but I, I'm, really, uh, I'm really familiar and uh, somewhat familiar and, and, and heard the organization name. So I, I, I'm in total support of your endeavors and uh, realize your challenges and anything I can do to help, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to do so. To continue your involvement, encouraging the sport activities there by our uh, Satu students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. <coughs> and perhaps you can uh, work with Sport North to find a sport that suits you in the future. <laughs> anything, uh, anything further from the committee? Ms. Thompson, did you have more? I have a few more. Um, in the conversation, um, uh, the presentation you talked about um, TSOs, territorial sport organizations, not wanting to be part of the process that was presented to them. Um, in my correspondence, in my conversation with a number of these organizations, they seem to be willing to do it. So, um, in your guys' last present, last meeting, the feedback you said that it wasn't, they weren't being, they had to do this and they begrudgingly went down that path and and then you've said that um, a couple of the or a number of the organizations I can't say which they are they said they don't have to be part of your organization um, so was this all done at this uh, the fall meeting and what was the discussion around that is saying that it wasn't part of the sorry thank you mr. chair thank you mr. Thompson Ms. Miller so um, at the <coughs> semi-annual meeting in November, uh, as I stated, uh, we asked a representative from MACA to come and present, speak on this very issue, 
of how this new accountability would move forward and what would it mean to the territorial sport organizations. Um, so it was during that question and answer period that a lot of these comments that I referred to you came about. And uh, one of the questions uh, in particular was, if the concern by the territorial sport organizations about the federation and its existence to continue on to support them. And the question was, why would I have to be a member of Sport North if I get funded directly through MACA? And the answer was, if you're involved in multi-sport games, then you would still need to be a member of Sport North to access multi-sport games. So the follow-up was, then if I'm not involved in multi-sport games, I don't need to be a member of Sport North. I just go off and do my own thing. So if I'm only in two communities and I'm okay with that, and I'm guaranteed the same level of funding for the next three years that I got when I had to try and go out and reach more communities, I'm good with that. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, I thank you for that answer. Um, I haven't seen the, the application process, but I'm just trying to understand um, if there's no growth and you're not part of the Federation, then are you, is that the direction is, is that anybody can apply for this funding? Or is this actually funding that is allocated, from your understanding, that is allocated from the lotteries? Because I've seen a spreadsheet and it says $5.1 million. Um, it's big, my spreadsheet I saw was based on an average of five years. Um, and that the territorial sport organizations were going to see an increase in funding um, from what I've seen um, from a number of your partners out there that showed me the spreadsheet. Um, so that territorial sport organizations were going to see an increase. Um, the, the partners were going to still proceed that way, but you still had to be membership. You still, like the TSO, still had to be part of Sport North to access this funding. So is it your understanding now that this has changed and it's opened up a, a new avenue that anybody can apply for this funding? Um, is that your understanding and that's what you've heard from the minister or from the, the administration out there? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Renmeister. Um, you're partially correct, Shane. Um, I, I don't think uh, at this point that they've ironed out any new members. Um, what they were going on was existing members and uh, past partners uh, and reallocation and redistribution of the, uh, the current funding. Um, but uh, I don't think, I know that we've posed the question on how do new members get, uh, get funded. Um, I don't think that's been worked out yet. Um, I know that it's on the agenda moving forward and I know that uh, the division has discussed it internally, but uh, I don't think a solution has been reached. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Mr. Thompson? I got some more questions. If you have some, you can ask. Uh, if you just go through them. I, I've got. I'll, uh, I'll save my comments till the end, Mr. Oh, Thompson. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, I guess um, in your meeting with the minister, were you guys able to? I guess. I guess. I don't know if it was a private meeting or not. But what was some of the discussions? Was it about the direction you guys are seeing? Is it about funding? Is it? What are the issues that? Um, you were able to bring to the minister and what was her response? I guess I'm, what I heard on the floor was that there was going to be a public meeting involving the five partners as we move forward. They were going to build up on a, a strategic plan that was based on recreation, sport, uh, youth, the physical activist activity, physical literacy. And so we were going to, from my understanding, was going to <clears throat> built on that, built on the, the national policies that are presently out there. So that was my understanding on the floor. And so I guess I'm looking at you guys, because you guys were in the meeting, I wasn't. So I guess what was the direction? And what was being discussed that brought you guys here today? Because it seems to be what was said on the floor may be different than what you guys are saying. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Ms. Miller. So, um, for the record, it was only the Sport North Federation, uh, so representatives of our board 
and the minister and department officials. So it was not a public meeting or a multi-partner meeting. Um, the same concerns we've raised here today and that we've raised in our correspondence to you are the same concerns we raised to the minister that day. Uh, keeping in mind that meeting with the minister was in early October. She had, you know, recently uh, come into her, her position as minister and, uh, you know, was uh, certainly doing her best to be uh, on top of where everything was with briefing notes. So were there commitments made or promises made? Uh, I would say no, that didn't happen. Uh, that the minister, um, we gave her information and that she received it and um, and where uh, she was unsure, she uh, advised us that she would get back to us. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Mr. Rambuster? There were commitments in the point of of uh, having a, a representative at our uh, sport forum um, that she would come back on some of the questions that we asked. Um, and one of the points, and I think um, Maureen's alluded to it a bit, is that it's, I mean, separating the funding from this federation and allocating it directly from government puts us in a compromising position in the sense that we no longer have that carrot in front of our TSOs to do a lot of uh, work on our behalf. Um, and so what we believe, and, and I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the board here, is that it really sets us back because, um, as you're aware, being a, a professional in, in, in the field, is that um, to convince a volunteer to take a certain direction or to follow um, you know, a certain path um, and be committed and passionate behind that is is a usually about a three to four year process. So for us, we've worked extensively. Now we've had four years to convince TSOs to go into the communities to ensure that they're um, allocating a good portion of their dollars to ensure that community athletes, community coaches, community officials are being trained. Um, we firmly believe, and I think it's a, as a collective, that we're being set back uh, quite a bit because once you stop that incentive-based process, it's very difficult to turn that tap back on, uh, especially when you're dealing with volunteers. Um, the other point that, that we've noticed in, in this process is the whole lack of attention to volunteer development, and, and I'm, I'm speaking on the broad sense, not uh, just sport, uh, uh, sport specific, but the whole attention to the volunteer sector within this territory isn't at par with our southern counterparts or even some of our territorial counterparts. Um, and especially in, a, in an era of fiscal restraint, uh, you would think government would, as uh, Maureen alluded to uh, with uh, some of the things that she quoted, regarding the volunteer sector and the government's role, that that would be uh, more of a, a prominent role moving forward. So uh, we're a little um, taken aback by some of the decision making in undermining volunteer sectors. And so I think that's what we're trying to present here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Reitmeister. And just to clarify um, Mr. Thompson's point though, has um, Sport North been invited to participate in uh, the development of a, an overarching strategy with the five partners uh, along the lines that Mr. Thompson spoke with, Mr. Rentmeister. Um, yeah, yes, we have. Um, and we, the minister did allude to it in our meeting, and I think there was follow-up with uh, uh, department officials on uh, commitment moving forward to, to doing that. Thank you, Mr. Rentmeister. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Thompson, I'll allow you one more question as we are uh, running short on time. I'll let you go to yours. Okay. Because, I mean, I could be here for the rest of the day here. So, I'm, because as you know, it's one of my passions. So, I will legally give you the floor. <laughs> oh, appreciate it, Mr. Thank Thompson. You very much for Thank you. Um, so, one of the things I went to the, uh, the Arctic Winter Games as uh, on behalf of this committee, um, and I was really struck by the, how important it is to. <laughs> 
<coughs> the volunteer sector to the youth sector, not just the sports themselves, but everything else it brings. And one of uh, you know one of the some of the shocking things I learned that were real eye openers for me because I I haven't in my own life participated in sport um, as much as I should. I haven't found my sport, <laughs> so you've got some work to do. But one of the things that was real eye opener for me was hearing the stories from you know our our friends in um, uh, in. Uh, um, Nunavik, the Nunavik region, um, where some of their athletes, young athletes, um, were so um, anxious about leaving their home communities, uh, some of them, in fact, inflicted self-harm on themselves. And, um, you know, having opportunities, more regular opportunities to participate in these pan-northern events where they, uh, we, we have similar culture, we have similar, similar environments and similar people. And um, I think it's so important that we get our kids out there and that we support these games and that we find a way to do it. So sports plays a, a very important role. And, um, you know, the work Sport North has done should, should be commended. And finding, you know, a way forward is um, if we can make it better, let's make it better. And I think the intentions of um, this Sutcliffe report that we've, the committee has had a chance to uh, look at um, were, were well-intentioned. Um, now we're kind of seeing that the implementation is, rock, er, is not without uh, concern. So to the report itself and, and some of the recommendations, um, do you, does Sport North have an, have an understanding or an opinion on why uh, the report called for all funding to be moved to a single source rather than the, the current model? Ms. Miller. Uh, the, the short answer is no, we don't. Uh, we were three, three members of our organization were um, surveyed, as were the other members. Uh, none of us brought up anything to do with how the funding model should change from, the, for, from what it previously had been, so that all the partners, the five partners, would all be funded the same way, right? Which is Asqua gets money, Aboriginal Sports Circle of the Western Arctic gets money, just in the same way that Sport North got money. So the only change in funding is to what happens to Sport North. So we did ask other partners, did you recommend that our organizations, our membership now has to change how they get funded? No, they did not. Um, Doug attended a meeting with the... Um, with, with the presentation of the Sutcliffe report, uh, with the writer of the report, we specifically asked that question. How did this come about? Where was the impetus that this had to specifically change, but other partners did not have to change? And we didn't get an answer. So my answer is, we did not. We don't know why, and nor did we ever <coughs> recommend it. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, so, uh, of course, there is this issue around lotteries and the CRA ruling on, on um, whether the tax-exempt status of, of uh, the lotteries. So, with the understanding that the government would move the administration of the lottery to a government source, um, do you, does Sport North continue or believe that you could disperse those funds on, on your own? Like, essentially, the funding model could remain unchanged if the l lottery is moved out of your control, but the funds still come back. Like, is that something that you believe would uh, would get around the tax ex the tax issues related to the lottery, Ms. Miller? So the lottery has not been in control of the federation for the last ten years. It has been in the control of the Sport and Recreation Council. That council is populated by members that are uh, um, appointed at the pleasure of the minister, and may or may not be involved with any of the five partners. Okay, so we have not had anything to do with the funding. So we don't see them taking the funding in-house, changing how we do our business as sport. And again, I would just say, we're the experts in sport. We should be left to do what sport does best. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, and finally, um, do you feel that uh, one of the things the report is, is, is uh, uh, appears to be quite clear in is that uh, uh, all of the respondents concluded that the funding source should change. Um, I believe the line is um, all, were all who were consulted were in agreement that TSOs sh should have one funder. Um, 
yet, and, and we're hearing from you now that some of your member TSOs do take issue with this change. So can you explain the discrepancy between that, those portions of the report and what you're telling us today, Ms. Miller? Well, I would say that the members feel there it should be one funder and it should be the organization of which they're a member in the past, just as it has always happened. So Sport North would apply for the funding through the SRC or through MACA, and then we would, we would work the funding through to our members. We, we don't know why um, anybody would feel that we, we've never been told by anybody, uh, SRC or MACA, that there is a problem with how we funded the territorial sport organizations, uh, that we were not, um, that we didn't do a good job of it, that there were issues with how we accounted for it. So this change is totally, totally out of the blue to us. Our members do want one funder. They want to be able to come to the Federation and do one-stop shopping. So. That, that's their wish. That is what the members have put in front of us. Unanimously in, in May at their annual general meeting, um, again in September at a meeting, uh, a conference call meeting we had with them. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the intent of the writer of the report was in their vision of a single funder and what the vision of the members were if they were asked that question. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Well, that concludes um, questions from committee members. And uh, I'd like to thank you again for being here today. If you have any uh, closing comments, I'll allow you to make them, Ms. Miller. Great. So just want to thank everybody for uh, hearing from us today. I know it was a, a while ago when we, when we wrote to the committee and we wrote to the uh, members of the Legislative Assembly as this was going on. We appreciate uh, all of the support from all of the members from all of the communities as it pertains to sport in the territory. And we're gonna continue to do what we believe is uh, in the best interests of the youth of the territory and, and the healthy living for the adults of the territory. So we're gonna continue to find ways forward. Um, we, we do have grave concerns and uh, we don't want sport to become um, uh, we can look to other models that have uh, other jurisdictions who've followed similar models. And, uh, you know, uh, Whitehorse is an example. Um, a lot of sport happens in the Yukon only in Whitehorse and maybe in, in one other community. And it doesn't happen in all of the communities in the same way it does in this territory right now. That's a model that's very similar to what we're talking about moving forward to follow. Those are concerns we have. And... Um, you know, we, we want to see when the Arctic Winter Games is hosted in the Northwest Territories that the people are sitting in the stands saying, go NWT, go, not go Whitehorse, go, which is what we heard at the last games in Whitehorse. So we, we, we really believe that. And, uh, you know, the, the, members, the, the members of the territorial sport organizations and the staff and the board of the Federation, um, do work very hard and tirelessly to make sure that that's what our future looks like. And so we, we really appreciate that you took the time today to hear from us. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Miller. And I'll encourage uh, the Federation to continue to advise um, our committee. If you, if you do have something to say, uh, please let us know what that is. And uh, we will consider it in, um, uh, in our review of changes to sport and rec funding. So thank you very much. And, uh, we will continue on with our agenda. Thanks, Mr. Natalie. <coughs> Go for it. Is it into the record now? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs>